Hi, and welcome to this video on maintaining Mackie Control Pro hardware. I'm going to cover three issues, backlight repair, fader replacement and firmware update. I'm making this video because of the lack of comprehensive online resources on the subject and to help those who are having trouble maintaining their devices economically. Mackie's own support resources are incomplete, so I'm going to aggregate information from manuals, suppliers, parts reviews and my own experience in repairing both first generation and pro versions of the Mackie Control Universal XD Extender and C4 devices. In the last six months I've used eBay to replace all my first generation devices with pro devices at no cost. Now, this is because I sold devices that were fully working and brought devices in need of backlight repair and fader replacement. As we shall see, these repairs are within the ability of anyone who can complete basic soldering tasks. For those who don't know, the Pro devices differ from the first generation devices by having USB MIDI connectivity, better case design and some rationalisation and improvements in the electronics. Also, more recent Pro devices are fitted with Alps rather than the old Penny and Giles faders. Because the Mackie Control communication protocols are already well established and supported by most door platforms, the basic device operating systems and functionality remain unchanged. Uh, here's a disclaimer, you should take all the usual precautions when completing these repairs to avoid injury or damaging your devices. Unplug the devices from the mains power and do not touch any wires or circuitry when testing your devices prior to reassembly. You complete these repairs at your own risk. Above all, take care, take your time and be patient. All of the Mackie Control devices feature blue LCD backlit displays. The Mackie Control also includes a separate Sempty Bar Beat display of a different type that as far as I know does not include a backlight. The LCD displays contain an EL panel backlight that fades with time until they eventually grow too dim to be readable and must be replaced. Typical lifespan is three to four years, but this will depend on hours used and energy saving settings applied in the control surface preference pane of a door. These panels contain a phosphorus layer, usually protected by a thin transparent laminated plastic covering. They emit light when a voltage is applied. The Mackie controls require white light to backlight their blue screens. EL panels can be a variety of colours when off but emit white light when on. Replacement backlights can be bought online from sites such as backlightforyou.com and are considerably less expensive than a complete LCD screen replacement. To replace the backlight you must disassemble the case of your device. Here we are disassembling a Mackie XT Extender Pro. Take care to separate the different screws in containers and take plenty of photos. Also take care not to damage any delicate components. You should mark the two power terminals to distinguish them. Once you have access to the LCD screen, desolder the two terminals of the existing backlight and slide it out. You may need to loosen some of the metal retaining tabs. Slide the new backlight in. Bend the two terminal contacts upwards and resolder. Do this quickly or you may damage the backlight. 
you may want to add some blobs of solder to the circuit board and then push the terminals into them with a tool. Before reassembly, turn the device on its side and test it by powering it up. When you have completed your repair, you may also wish to change the backlight dimmer interval to 5 minutes or less in your door's setup control panel to improve your backlight's lifespan. First generation devices and early pro devices use Penny and Giles faders. These are clearly identifiable from the P and G embossed on their fader caps. These devices are incompatible with version 4 firmware, which is designed to support the new Alps faders now supplied with all new devices. Alps faders have no identifying marks on their fader caps. There is a video elsewhere on YouTube showing you how to repair a Penny and Giles fader. You can source replacement faders from Mackie service centres such as Full Compass in the US and Service Centre Echo in Europe, or even from eBay. I recommend you buy some spares. You may want to buy a second-hand XD device for spare faders. Fader replacement is easy. Remove the fader cap and undo the two hex screws. Flip the device over and remove the bottom panel. You can now pull off the connector, remove the fader and replace. Before fully reassembling the device, flip it over, power it up and check that your new fader passes initialization and calibration. Download the manuals from the Mackie support site for detailed instructions on how to calibrate them. The C4 firmware has not changed with the introduction of the C4 Pro and remains at version 3.00. First generation Mackie Control and XT devices with Penny and Giles faders remain at firmware versions 3. These devices are both incompatible with and do not require version 4 firmware. Mackie Control Pro and XT Pro devices with Alps faders running version 4.0 or higher firmware can be updated to firmware version 4.03. The version 4 software accommodates the new action of the Alps faders and version 4.03 refines the algorithms. The firmware updater takes the form of a systems exclusive dump contained in a MIDI file. You simply open the file into your door, prepare the Mackie device to receive it and start play. It takes about two minutes during which you will see a line of dots crawl across the LCD display. The version 4.03 firmware updater can be downloaded from Mackie's support site. It includes a PDF of instructions, but there are several additional issues to be aware of before attempting to update. 1. Update one device at a time. 2. You may need to open the MIDI file as a new project and not simply import it into an existing project. Three. Ensure the device is disabled in the control surface setup pane of your door. 4. Ensure you do not have a MIDI loop with the dump being passed back to the door. 5. Any other MIDI systems messages being transmitted at the same time as the dump may cause errors. Therefore you should ensure that the systems exclusive dump is the only track in your project and the transmission of any MIDI sync or MIDI timecode messages are suspended. 6. I found that the update would only work if I sent the dump via a separate USB connected MIDI interface and not directly to or via a USB connected Mackie Control Pro device. You may not have this issue. And 7. You will need to restart and reset your device to the desired door operating mode after the update. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you found it useful. Please do share any additional information and your own experiences by commenting.